and said, Ya Rasulallah, O Messenger of Allah, Ara'ayta in kanafi? What about if the person actually has what I am saying? Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, In kanafihi faqad ightabta. If what you said is in the person, this is considered to be backbiting. وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهِ And if he does not have what you said, then indeed you have slandered him. So this is the rule. This is backbiting. Now, there are some exceptions, and hear me hear carefully to what I'm about to say. There are some exceptions to this rule. What are the exceptions? One of the, uh, our uh, scholars placed it in, a, uh, in a, uh, a poem that I hope I can recall it. Ahdi bihi tawil. Al qadhu laysa bi ghibatin fi sittatin. Speaking bad about someone in their absence is not considered to be backbiting in six cases. Mutadallimin wa muhaddirin wa mu'arrifi wa mustaftiyan wa mujahiran fisqa wa taliba ma'unatin fi izalati munkari. Case number one, someone who is oppressed. Somebody committed oppression against you. Let's say that you're going to go to the police station. You're not going to go and tell them the person is an angel. Rather, you're going to have to tell them what they have done, which they would not like. But yet, you are allowed to do this because you're trying to lift the injustice from you. What is the evidence for this? Qawlullahi ta'ala fi surat al-Nisa لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم الله سبحانه وتعالى does not like you to speak bad about somebody except or unless you are being oppressed and you want to lift that oppression but be careful now don't go and throw allegations which the person did not do you only tell what they have done only. Any extra word or unnecessary statement, you're going to be held accountable and it is considered to be backbiting. So this is case number one. Case number two, Mustafti. Mustafti. Somebody who goes to an imam, a wife for example, we have, let's mention the story of Hind, Hind bin Uttah, al hadith al sahih Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan, she went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said to him, Ya Rasulallah, O Messenger of Allah, Inna Aba Sufyan Rajulun Shahih. Abu Sufyan is يعني, a little bit stingy. He does not spend. What should I do? Oh, of course Abu Sufyan would not like this to be said about him. But Hind wants to take care of her uh, livelihood and the children. And she wanted to know what she can do about this. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa did not blame her or tell her this is backbiting. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told her what to do. He said to her, Khudi ma yakfiki wa yakfi waladaki bil ma'roof. Take what is sufficient for you and your children, meaning from his money, khudi min malihi, yani, from his wealth, what is sufficient for you and what is sufficient for your children according to what's customary. So this is case number two. But I want to warn the uh, brothers, especially the imams, that when somebody comes asking for a religious ruling, asking for a hukm, asking for a fatwa, uh, and then he backbites about the person, make sure that you let this person know, listen, I'm not a judge here, I'm just giving you a religious ruling. Because for me to be a judge, for me to arbitrate, I must call the other party in and hear their side of the story. Ya ikhwa, there is a difference between somebody who gives a religious ruling, like somebody calls me and tells me, okay, uh, Sheikh, my husband did this and this and this and this, what should I do? I'm going to give her a fatwa. I'm not being a judge. For me to be a judge, I must hear the brother. I must hear his case. وَوَعَنَّ قِصَّ مَشْهُورَ جِدًّا سَجْدِ الدَّاوُودِ 
ها وهل اتاك نبا الخصم اذ تصوروا المحراب اذ دخلوا على داوود ففزع منهم ها ده ستوري فيري فيما ستوري في سوره صعد that somebody entered into the uh, room of Dawood alayhi salam in order to arbitrate and he said uh, I have only one sheep and my brother has 99 sheep and he want to take my sheep Sayyidina Dawood right away judged, ruled it's a convincing case قال لقد ظلمك بسؤال نعجتك إلى نعاجه indeed he has committed injustice by asking your sheep you have only one sheep and you want to take it away from you? Huh? Uh, right away, Dawood realized that he fall into a fitna. وَظَنَّ دَاوُودُ أَنَّمَا فَتَنَّاهُ فَاسْتَغْفَرَ رَبَّهُ وَخَرَّ رَاكِعًا وَأَنَابَ So uh, again, I want to make this clear. There is a difference between you being an imam who gives a religious ruling, fatwa, and somebody who judge. The judge must hear both sides of the story and must hear each one of the two parties before he arbitrate but in Mustafti you come and ask for fatwa I'm gonna give you fatwa based on what you tell me Mustafti number three Muhadhir Muhadhir in a community in a Muslim community there is somebody who comes and sells drugs to the youth of the community and you know it now sure, what should you do right away you go to the Imam you go to the Imam and tell him there is this person because you're warning your warning. Mu'arif. That's case number four. I want to rush into this because this subject is so beautiful. Uh, Mu'arif. Uh, somebody who calls you and he, he uh, let, let's say, okay, uh, somebody from Denver wanted to marry somebody from um, uh, uh, California. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the father in California doesn't know the person here. So he calls, uh, the, the person tells him, okay, I go to that masjid. Okay. And then he calls me. I'm the Imam of this masjid here, Colorado Muslim Society. I'm the Imam here in Colorado. Uh, there is this brother who attends your masjid. He is interested in marrying my daughter. What do you know about him? I must give him a straightforward report about it. I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, because had a testimony, this is a testimony. And it could be a false testimony. And this is a major sin if you give a false testimony. Shahada al zur ala wa shahada al hadith Abi Bakr, ala wa shahada al zur ala wa shahada al zur And then, haqq al-Muslim ala al-Muslim, the right of a Muslim, abun another Muslim, wa idha stansah ka fansah. There are six rights of a Muslim, abun other Muslim. Wa'anna hadith fi, fi al-adab al-mufrad lil-imam al-Bukhari, حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن فاطمة بنت قيس فاطمة بنت قيس رضي الله عنها a female companion two individuals came to ask her in marriage so she came to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and she said يا رسول الله إن معاوية وأبا جهم جهم with M خطباني معاوية and أبا جهم asked me in marriage الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said to her أما معاوية فصعلوك معاوية doesn't have money he's poor وأبو جهم is somebody who places the stick in his shoulder all the time that means he beats women that's one or uh, he travels because the Arabs once they travel they used to uh, place uh, you know their water in, in, in one side of the stick and their food in the other side of the stick and they place it in the shoulder so he's going to hang around the house too much so he told her the, 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 the faults of those two in order for her to decide. And at the end of the day, she did not marry either one of those. And she married, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Osama ibn Zayd radiyallahu an. So, mujahiran fisqa wa taliban ma'una fi izalati munkari. Or, somebody who, I, I, I love this when I, I taught this in, um, in Maryland, in, in PGMA, uh, where I used to be an imam before. And I love this. I had a student, his name is Bilal, Bilal Wuri. MashaAllah, he's one of the people who memorized the Quran. Uh, Bilal came one day because I told him that if you go to the parking lot and you see people doing something wrong in the parking lot, now you cannot change it. If you tell them this is wrong, Bilal was like seven or eight years old at the time, uh, they're going to beat you up. So now you need to come and ask for help. Let's say that somebody in the parking lot, uh, opening the car, stealing the cars, a car thief, for example, and, and you're a little, you cannot, if you go there, you're afraid he's going to shoot you. Come running to the masjid and call for help. 
So hopefully we helped you, my sister. Yeah, I and mean, this was a lengthy answer, but I think uh, the subject is worthy of, of covering, uh, which is the exceptions. When are you allowed to speak ill or bad about somebody in their absence and uh, without being uh, sinful? Hopefully we did not confuse you, rather we're giving you an answer, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. MashaAllah, that was, uh... okay, we go back to Hadith Abi Hurairah, Rabi Allahu An. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqul, Athqalu Salatayni Ala Al Munafiqeen, Salatu Al Fajri wa Salatu Al Isha. The heaviest two salat on hypocrites is Salatu Al Fajr and Salatu Al Isha. Walau Ya'lamu, or Walau Alimu, Ma Fihima Min Al Ajri. لا أتوهما ولو حبوا. and if they know the reward of praying fajr and praying isha in the masjid with the imam, they would come to observe those two salahs even if they are crawling, crawling in their bellies. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نعم. name, state, and question, please. My name is Amira, and I'm calling from Georgia. And what is your question tonight? Um, I was wondering if you could explain the word of Ain. Explain what again? Um, the word. Hur al-Ain? Um, Hur al-Ain. In Jannah? Hur al-Ain in Jannah or what? Yes. Hur al the, the women of Jannah. Yes, and how to become one? Well, uh, those are created by Allah in Jannah, but He cannot be one. But Allah is going to make you so beautiful in Jannah uh, that, um, you know, your husband will never like... Uh, when, ya ikhwa, when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about uh, our spouses in Jannah, uh, whether males or females here, husbands or wives, he said, as wajun mutahara, purified wives, pu purified spouses, I'm sorry. Purified from what? Okay, no anger, no hate, no envy, okay? Uh, the physical purification too. Uh, you don't go to the bathroom in Jannah. No, no bathrooms in Jannah. Women, no period, no more period. Um, uh, a person will be healthy all the time. Ya ahl al jannah, inna lakum an tasihu fala tasqamu. And they are youth; they will never grow old. So, uh, you know, and and that is something that Subhanallah, that uh, you know, uh, sometimes we cannot be the perfect husbands for our wives, or we cannot be the perfect wives for our husbands. And ya ikhwa Allah, one of the uh, things that really bothers me is when, you know, uh, a brother gets married and after 10, 12 years, and then now he feels like maybe he made a mistake and he doesn't want it to hang around his wife and he want to recycle and, or maybe the wife want to recycle the husband. Think about her in Jannah and think about him in Jannah. Uh, Subhanallah, uh, he or she will be the spouse whom you wish them to be, and they can't be in this world. So, uh, even so, uh, that you're not going to be al-hur al but you're going to be purified. You're going to be given a different body, a different shape. Uh, you're going to be the, the most beautiful uh, wife uh, for your husband, and he will be the most wonderful husband for the wife. As for al-hur al those are in Jannah, those are the creation of Jannah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi wasfihim, yani subhanallah, I look at this hadith that is out of this world, that if one of them would look down upon us now on earth, her brightness, her brightness will override the, 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 the sun, the, bright, the, the light of the sun, or the light of the moon. Yani she will fill earth as if she is 
مور ان ان لايت اور ان ذان ذا سن ان الله سبحانه وتعالى also said something so beautiful about them and just to, to tell you that uh, really good decent husbands they would not like their wives to look at other men you know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about them in surah al-rahman qasiratu at-tarf she does not look to anyone else but you ya Allah she only looks at you <laughs> she, she, she does not look at it. I mean, this is what a man wants. You know, you don't want your wife to go and look around other men, or you don't want your 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 husband to go around and look at other men, other um, uh, women in a way. But uh, uh, the important thing is, uh, you know, that's that's the uh, uh, the idea uh, that al uh, are uh, the extra that a person gets. Now, uh, here is uh, something that is uh, interesting that a lot of women may be in trouble, uh, which is how she will feel about her husband having al hurul Let's say that somebody is going to have his wife in Jannah. And by the way, you, you're going to end up with your, the, the, with, your, with your wife, the wife that you lived with in the dunya. If you had more than one, then you go with the last one. Okay? If somebody did not get married, if, if somebody did not get married, then Allah will give them spouses in Jannah. But now, how a woman would feel about her husband having al-hur al Okay? She is married to this man and yet he's having... Remember, the feeling of envy, the feeling of jealousy will be extracted. We're going to be given a new body which does not uh, feel uh, the way that we feel ab uh, about it this way. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ Ya Allah, I love Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib's statement regarding this verse. He said, I love this verse. You know, the, the, the companions, they had some bridges between them. And, and, the, and, and then he said, I'm waiting for Jannah when, you know, we'll get to Jannah together. And all the envy and all the dislike and the hate that we had in our hearts are going to be extracted, taken out. So, inshallah, hopefully we help you, uh, my sister, with uh, some of the information about الحور العين and women in general in Jannah. جزاك الله خيرا. and um um I emailed you a a link to a YouTube video and I don't know if you got it or not. yes I did and I really don't like it. please يعني I I don't like yeah I don't like music يا أخي يا أختي يعني music يا أختي حرام. Uh, any time that you use something uh, haram, a tool, haram tool to even uh, convey the right message. Uh, in Islam, uh, uh, I hope I'm, 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 I'm talking about the right video. But, and I, please don't mention it. Don't say who it is. Because I don't like to go after anybody on my show here. Uh, but in general, in general, al-ghayat, afwan, al-wasail laha ahkam al-ghayat. The objective does not justify the means in Islam. Period. Okay, if you want to convey a good message about Islam, about Sayyidina Isa, Prophet Jesus, and so forth, use a means that is lawful. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in al haram. Music is haram. How can you have music in, 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 and while you're delivering a message like this? So please, yani, don't, don't, don't do this. Jazakallah khair. وياك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته so we go back to hadith abi huraira radiyallahu an that the hibi al salah on the hypocrites salat al fajr wa salat al isha walaw alimu and if they know the reward which is hidden in those two salahs la atawhuma walaw habwa they will come to those two salahs even if they are crawling السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته how are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Name, state, and question? Nader from Chicago, Illinois. Nader again, mashallah. How are you, Nader? No, no, this is Maher, his brother, his twin brother, Maher. Oh, so there is Maher and Nader? Yeah, Maher and Nader. Mashallah, those are nice names. You're the skilled one. Yeah. Okay, go ahead with your question. <laughs> he's uh, he's the rare he's the rare one, and you are the skilled one. Okay, okay what is your question tonight? <laughs> uh, there's an incident that happened in the Muslim 
Now, if, if someone who is doing the event and he doesn't pronounce the event, like the words correctly, does, I mean, does someone have to redo the event? Nah, no. If, as long as he says the words of the adhan or the statements correctly. If he switches a letter here and there, it is permissible. We would rather have somebody who is eloquent with a beautiful voice. And uh, يعني, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, when Abdullah ibn Zayd, the companion who saw actually the dream regarding the adhan, uh, he had the copyright for the adhan. You know the story behind the adhan, don't you, Maher? Shall I tell it to you? No. Shall I tell it to you? You don't want me to, you don't want me to tell it to you? Tell it to me. Okay, good man, good man. That's the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> you know the companion uh, whose name is Abdullah ibn Zayd? Uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after building the masjid, he didn't know what to do about calling the companions into the masjid to observe the regular salah. Because they did not have watches at the time. And sometimes it's cloudy and the shade is not there for them to figure, the, figure it out. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was about to take a horn. And then later on he was about to take a bill. And he was so consumed with this. Whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is consumed about something, also his companions are consumed about it. So Abdullah ibn Zayd went to sleep and he saw somebody carrying a horn in his hand. And he said, or a bill, uh, I'm not sure, I mean, uh, he said to him, can you give me that bill or that horn? He said, why? He said, well, we want to call, we want to alert the people about the adhan, uh, about the time for the salah. And then the Prophet, sallallahu, and then uh, he told him, shall I tell you something much better than this? And he taught him the words of the adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله So as long as the person who calls the adhan come up with this يعني في سي يعني أشهد أشهد يعني it's accepted but you do not have to repeat the adhan جزاك الله خيرا ماهر جزاك الله خيرا وياكي بارك الله فيك سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so why the two salas are too heavy in the hypocrites because عشاء comes when you're sitting at home on the sofa holding the remote control and watching your football game or your soccer game or sometimes the soap opera which is haram to watch to begin with and then Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar and you're sitting, you don't want to go ah, that's a sign of hypocrisy right there Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum as Yeah, I have a question Can you tell us your name and state and that will help? MashaAllah, what is your question tonight? My question, Father, uh, I want to know exactly uh, the, you know, the height of the Makkah. What do you want to know about Hajj? I mean, this question is like... You know, uh, the, the stone. The, the stone, what stone? The black stone? Oh, yes. What about the black stone? The story behind it? The story behind the black stone. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters in Islam, our brother is calling from Canada asking about the black stone. Al Hajaru al Aswad min al Jannah. The black stone is from Jannah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam to raise, to raise the foundation of the Kaaba. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ سبحان الله سيدنا إبراهيم عليه السلام was standing and he raised the pillars on the foundation of the house and there was that hole 
which is in the corner, which he did, he did not find a rock, a brick that fits in it. So he said to his son Ismail, وهذا يعني هذه الآثار يعني ثابتة is authentic بعضها حسن وبعضها صحيح يعني بعضها صحيح and بعضها good chain of narration and authentic chain of narration. He said to his son Ismail, go and look for a brick that can fit into that hole. Uh, while Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam is searching the desert, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came and he handed Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam the stone. At this time, at this time, it was whiter than the snow. Abiyad min thalj. But what happened? Because the mushriks, they kept coming and making hajj. The mushriks in Mecca. They kept coming and making hajj uh, before the prophethood of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and because of them touching it, it turned into black. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned that whosoever goes to hajj, and we know the uh, going around the Kaaba, uh, the seven rounds, uh, the start of it is you actually do something called istilamul hajar, that you actually uh, try to uh, kiss the black stone or touch it and then kiss your hand if you touch it with your hand or point to it that's called istilam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring that black stone in the day of resurrection and it will bear witness for the person who did the istilam properly now we want to be careful once we kiss the black stone we're not worshipping the stones we're not and uh, uh, the statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an fi sahih al-Bukhari is so crystal clear when he went and he kissed the black stone he made that beautiful statement and he said Wallahi inni la a'lamu annaka hajar la tadurru wa la tanfa' wa law la anni ra'aytu rasool Allah yuqabbiluk ma qabbaltuk by Allah I believe in the depth of my heart that you are a black that you are a rock Benefits not, harms not. Having I seen with my own eyes the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kissing you, I would not have been kissing you. So we're kissing the black stone as obedience to Allah, not to glorify or worship the stone. Be careful, be careful. The same exact thing. Allah commanded the angels to bow down to Adam. They did this out of obedience to Allah, they were not worshipping Adam, rather they were obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallahu khaira, barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. أنتم مدينة. Your name is what again? مدينة. Okay, and you're calling from me. Where? Virginia. Virginia. And what is your question tonight? Um, are we going to have another race? You're going to have another what? Another uh, uh, contest, you mean? Another life. Another life? Yeah. After this world? Yeah. Absolutely. The other life is the everlasting one. Ya Allah. This life is the fake one. <laughs> well, the, you, look, look what Allah said in the Quran. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْقِلُونَ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ أَوْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْقِلُونَ سورة العقل. Did you go to the hellfire or did you come back to the other life? Yes, some Muslims who did bad in this world, they may have to go to the hellfire for a while. But they will be taken out of the hellfire and placed in paradise because they said, La ilaha illallah. 
So make sure that you always keep La ilaha illallah. Don't ever, ever, never, ever, never let La ilaha illallah go. Okay? Good, good, good. good. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi. Salaamu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum. Some of the reward for Salatul Fajr and Salatul Asha, the Hadith of Sahih, Man salla al-ishaa fi jama'a faqad ka, faka'ana ma qama nusf al-layl. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Salaamu alaykum. Whosoever prays ishaa in jama'a, as if he prayed half of the night. Wa man salla al-fajr fi jama'a faka'ana ma qama al-layl kulla. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, name, state, and question, please. Um Nuh, Delaware. Um Nuh from Delaware. What is your question, Sister Um Nuh? حكمه آثم يعني بدون عذر يعني؟ الشغل. لا الشغل مش عذر. Our sister is asking the ruling regarding somebody or someone who misses two Jumu'ahs because of work. You see that the, the command in the Quran is so clear. <laughs> Leave off selling. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particular said selling because when you sell something you get cash. And cash normally gets you going. <laughs> Allah told you to leave this. Leave this. فالشغل is not an excuse. The only two excuses for a man to miss Jumu'ah is if you are a traveler, تسقط عنك الجمعه. Or if you are sick, تسقط عنك الجمعه. If you are sick or a traveler, those are the only two excuses. Or you are enslaved, which we don't have. العذر الثالث, which we don't have. Other than this, this person is sinful. He must repent to Allah because this is a major sin. And he must vow and intend not to go back to this. Jazakallahu khairan ya umma nuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. So if you pray fajr in jama'ah, subhanallah, as if you prayed half of the night. And if you pray isha in jama'ah, as if you prayed the whole night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم. Can you turn down the TV? Hello. Can you turn down the TV, please? Hello. 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 Yeah. عليكم. Can you turn down the TV? Yes. I would like to ask a question. Can you Can you turn down the TV, please? One second. Okay. I'll give you one second. Just turn down the TV, please. Brother. I have a question. Go ahead. Yes. My question is about uh, Surah Al-Sad. Um, Sad is not us, is not us, Sad. It's Sad. Sad. Uh, not, not a, not a. There is no a at the, end, at the beginning. It's Surah Sad. Okay. Okay. Now, verse number 41. Tell me some of the verse, please. Verse number 41. Tell me some of it. Tell me some of it. وَذْكُرْ عَبْدَنَا أَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِنُصْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ أُرْكُضْ بِرِجْلِكَ هَذَا مُغْتَسَلٌ بَارِدٌ وَشَرَابٌ نعم. What is the question? My question is, he said, even if the Quran must tell me, um, isn't a person tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why did he say, Because Allah sometimes, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, when Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam uh, basically uh, made his supplication, whether it is in Surah Sa'd or Surah Al-Anbiya, he said that shaitan basically caused me to have this. Sometimes, ya ikhwa, you need to understand this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows shaitan to get to a person in order for the person to return to Allah. 
And this is always what I say to the brothers who come rushing to the masjid. Brother, I have a jinni, I have a jinni. I'm possessed by a jinni, brother. I said, because you're not absorbing the adhkar. I asked the brother, you pray five times? No, I I'm not saying Prophet Dawood did this, by the way. Just, uh, I'm just, it's, it's just irrelevant to uh, the, the story of Sayyidina, Daw uh, Sayyidina Ayyub, to be careful. Uh, but the shahid or the important thing is, shaitan, uh, yani, he does not have power. He does, his power does not override the power of Allah. Absolutely not, if this is what you're asking. But Allah sometimes let shaitan do this in order to benefit the person. And this is what happened with Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam. Jazakallah khair. Yes, uh, brother? Yes. Yes, I have a brother here. He's waiting to ask a question also. One second. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, here's my question. I'm, I'm a convert. I converted about a year ago. I revert. And, and I have a relative who keeps telling me that uh, the hadith is haram and the Quran forbids it. Minnu lillah, ya shaykh. Minnu lillah, li yugul lak hadha al-kalam. I'm sorry? Whoever tells you this, Ya Rajil, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. He, is, he needs to revert to. <laughs> he needs to come back to Islam. Well, he, he, he says he's a Muslim. He's a, uh, and what do they call it? They submitter. Yeah, but uh, you see, that, that, that approach, and, and subhanallah, uh, what is your name? I'm sorry, brother. Mahmoud from California. Mahmoud, you know, Wallahi, Mahmoud, the Prophet وسلم, uh, actually said this will happen in my ummah. Yushiku, here is what he said. Yushiku and Yakuna Rajulun Shabanun Muttakiun ala Ali Katihi. Time will come when a, a man with a big belly sitting uh, uh, on his couchy couch, he's happy with the dunya. And then, uh, you know, and then he receives a command from me, and he will say, no, I'm not going to follow it. I'm only going to follow the Quran. Okay. Taib, Mahmoud, let me ask you, or, or you need to go back and ask him, tell me where do you find in the Quran that there is Fajr, there is Asr, there is Maghrib, there is Isha, there is Duhur, I forgot Duhur. Yeah. And Fajr is two rakahs, Dhuhr is four rakahs, Asr is four rakahs, Maghrib is three rakahs, Asha is four rakahs. Where do you find this in the Quran? Hmm? If you're going to reject the Sunnah, Mr. Smarty Man who tells you that, yeah. answer. Yeah. Where do you find, yes, in the Quran there is wa'atu zakah, pay the zakah. Where do you find in the Quran that the zakah is 2.5% of the nisab? Where do you find this? Where do you find in the where do you find in in the Quran how to perform Hajj? Shuf, uh, Mahmoud, look in the Quran, a uh, beautiful verse in Surah An-Nahl. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl, Surah An-Nahl وأنزلنا إليك الذكر لتبين للناس ما نزل إليهم ولعلهم يتفكرون. And we reveal to you, O Muhammad, a dhikr. Okay, just underline the word dhikr. I know you, you may not know the meaning of it, which means a reminder, but underline it. The verse is not over yet, Ya Mahmoud. لتبين للناس in order to explain to the people what was revealed to them? Oh, revealed to them from the Quran. The Sunnah explains the Quran. The Sunnah explains the Quran. The Hadith explains the Quran. If you reject the Hadith, that means the Quran cannot be explained. Fa, يعني, يعني to say the least, uh, Mahmoud, stay away from the brother and, 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 and make dua for him because he's really in, in danger. Anybody who says this, that you reject the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the hadith, this person is in trouble. And subhanallah, يعني, uh, okay, here it is. In the Quran, ya Mahmoud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُدُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the messenger tells you to do, do, tells you in the hadith. 
And whatever the messenger tells you not to do, do not do. This is in the Quran. Huh? Now if I come to you and I tell you the Prophet said in the Hadith, you're not going to do it, you're really rejecting the Quran. <laughs> because the Quran told you to take what the messenger commanded you to do. You're getting it, Mahmoud? Making sense to you? I do. I, I yeah. It, I mean, give me a break. You cannot even do that. Yeah, 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 yeah subhanallah. Yeah, I mean, this is the problem. And, and, and people like those, wallahi, yeah, and I feel so bad about them. They are my brothers. And I would love for them to, to come back to their senses. And uh, because this is dangerous. This is very dangerous. So make dua for him, and, and hopefully you can get him to understand that this uh, stuff is not uh, subject to uh, views and, and, and opinions and desires and hawa and so forth. I, I didn't think so either, that his, his argument is that because the Qur'an was protected, he's saying how do we authenticate, how do we know that, that the hadith is, is protected or if it's authentic or, you know. You see, that, that argument also is false argument. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra. Indeed, we have re revealed the reminder. If dhikr here means the Quran and the Sunnah, so how the Quran was protected? How? Huh? How the Quran was protected, Mahmoud? Because he got Muslims who memorized it from word to word, uh, page to page. The same exact thing with the Sunnah. The same exact thing with the Sunnah. Like the Quran was memorized, the Sunnah was memorized. Mahmoud, you know you always hear that, that, uh, that title, Hafiz, Hafiz, you know Hafiz, the word Hafiz, it refers to somebody who memorizes the Quran at this time. You know the word Hafiz, during the era of our righteous predecessors, it used to refer to the person who memorizes the Hadith, and not just the Hadith. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he says, Inni ahfadu alfa alfa Hadith. I memorize one million hadith. Oh, but the memorization, not just the 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 the, the met, not just the text. They go like hadathana so and so, so and so, so and so told me. He heard it from so and so, and he heard it. this is what we call chain of narration. And so and so, ya Mahmoud, this is a science. The person does not know what's going on, ya Akhi. Something was developed in early era of the Ummah called the science of the hadith authenticating and weakening. We know who is this narrator. We could find out whether he actually met the one who heard it from him or not. Uh, I tell you a story and they're telling me my time is up, but I gotta tell you this story, just to let you know uh, how, how this stuff is, 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 sometimes I just override my directors here, if you, if you don't mind, okay? Uh, this is my last call. Yeah, this is my last caller, so let me just explain this. You know, you know Mahmoud, uh, uh, in, in, in the past, uh, the, the, the experts, the, the, the narrators of the hadith, you know their wish in this world is to have Sanad Ali. What is Sanad Ali? A shorter chain of narration. The closer you are to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best you are. So instead of saying so and so told me and so and so told me and you mentioned six, seven names, you, they didn't like that. They would rather have two names or three names between them and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is why they used to travel for a month. For a month, Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah traveled for a whole month to hear a hadith in order to get a higher chain of narration. But here is that story. Somebody like this, a narrator of the hadith, okay, he was in Egypt. He went to Iraq because he learned that a person heard this hadith. And by hearing it from him, he can delete two narrators from the chain. This way he's going to end up with a higher chain of narration. I hope that the viewers understand what I'm talking about. But I'm sure a lot of you uh, are aware. This is the science. This is, man, this is fun. This person, the hadith is not, uh, is not uh, preserved. Come on, man, give me a break. Look at these books here. Give me a break. Get a life. I tell him, get a life. Wallahi, I tell him, get a life. So he arrives at Iraq. Yeah, please tell him the Imam said get alive peacefully, but, but in a nice way. I said it in a nice way. Mahmoud, he goes to Iraq all the way, and he arrives in Iraq. And guess what? He went to his house. He did not find him. He asked his wife, where is he? He said he's in the farm. So he, uh, I hope I can, uh, I can get you to understand this. He found him 
acting like he, he's trying to get his horse to catch his horse. He had a horse running away and he's trying to catch the horse. So he acted like he has something in his clothes and he's like uh, acting like he want to give food to the horse. You know when you place some, uh, you, 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 you collect your garment and you act like you have something, you have some food for the animal. So the horse would come to that person. But in reality he did not have anything, he's actually cheating the horse. So that the person who came all the way from Egypt said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm trying to catch the horse. I said, but you don't have anything in your clothes. He said, well, I'm just cheating him. He said, you know what? I'm not going to hear the hadith from you. If you can cheat an animal, you can cheat the Prophet ﷺ. And he left him and he did not hear the hadith from him because he did not like his manners. Ya, 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 Mahmoud, there are books that tells you who is this narrator? Where did he live? What was his job? how his manners were, uh, how his manners were. Was he known to be a liar? Okay, how did he meet this person? Like, okay, somebody, for example, who works as a farmer and he lives in Morocco. And then he says, I heard this hadith from somebody in, in, in Syria. You're a farmer, how did you go to Syria? Okay, you're not, if you are a trader, then it's possible. But how you get to Syria? Fayaqi, this, this stuff is, is uh, uh, trust the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah, the Quran and the Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the followers of the Quran and the Sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his farewell, in his farewell sermon, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will brighten the face of somebody who hears my hadith and then he passes it on to other people. Let's pass on the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mahmoud, I want to say jazakallahu khaira, and may Allah reward you for your question, and you are our last caller. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the typical thing that we say at the last of the show, please support Gaidas TV. Please, we need to keep that channel in the air so we can watch and learn our religion. So we do not fa uh, fall as victims to people who speak without knowledge, to people who speak out of their desires. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid. Whatever I said right today is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever I said wrong today is from myself and from my shaitan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive it for me. Till the next episode of Let's Talk About It, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته